Today, I want to talk about the merits of Micro Four Thirds and compare to full frame cameras. Let's go. Hi, it's Jimmy Cheng here from Red35. If you're new to this channel, I'm a professional portrait and documentary photographer and filmmaker. I've been using my camera to make money for the best part of my last 17 years. And it is my passion and my love. And everything I do with my camera isn't just for making a living, but also to satisfy my creativity. As I already made the statement on Michael Four Thirds, let's track back a little so you know exactly where I'm coming from. But before I continue, please understand that my opinion in this video is solely based on my use case. And I understand and appreciate that every photographer is different. However, if you're a photographer who photographs in the same field as I am, then you will immediately appreciate to what I'm about to say. I will also show you plenty of examples so you can understand some of the pros and cons on Michael Four Thirds and what are my solutions to combat such shortcomings about this little platform. Ah, one more thing. Today, I won't be talking about system size. Of course, it's the strength of Micro Four Thirds. But as many may argue that full frame and other platforms are getting smaller. So rather than having a debate, I'm going to show you and lead by examples instead. I have been super busy over the past few months, and I'm glad to see that my business is finally picking up after everything went dead for the past couple of years due to, well, pandemic. So I'm quite excited to share some photos I took over this period and more specifically, a wedding that I photographed in August with my second photographer using a Sony full frame camera. I'm not here to criticize or to say anything about this particular second photographer that I hire, but I will use his photos as examples to compare my shots on the day and to explain some real world advantage and disadvantage for both the micro forces and the full frame system. So you gain a real world uh, uh, educated information rather than looking at test charts, numbers, and all these whatever comparisons online these days. One of the biggest debate on camera platforms is image quality. Well, that is understandable because you are pulling cash from your wallet and spending thousands on equipment and you want to know your money is going as far as it can, right? <laughs> well, we're in 2022 and you can see that under normal lighting conditions, and I mean well-lit scenes, and any cameras can get great results, even smartphones. And lenses do impact on image quality or the rendering if you wish, but I don't want to complicate issues here. So I want to concentrate on performance of the camera sensors. What starts to differentiate each format is, well, when the light starts to dim. You can never defy physics. So the smaller the sensors, the smaller the photo size, the less light each pixel can absorb. And the result is more noise being introduced when the system tries to amplify the sensor's sensitivity. So yes, small sensors will be worse in tricky lighting situations comparatively for sure. With that said, here are some examples for my full frame second photographers on the day. First, you may notice that he used really high ISO in many of his shots. For most indoor photos, I rarely see anything dips below ISO 3200. And you may wonder why. But if you look closer, many of these shots have small aperture settings because he needed the deeper depth of field to cover the focus he needed for his shots. Now, here are some shots from me. And you can see that my ISO settings are way lower, often hovering around 400 and 1600 in the same environment because of the inherent benefit or drawback, as some may say, of deeper depth of field on smaller sensor system. And I don't have to close my aperture and often I could just shoot my lenses wide open. Remember, I'm reiterating my use case as a portrait and documentary photographer. So in practice, I found the difference in image quality is minimal. And in some cases, I actually see that my Michael Forther images having the upper hand as I gain more dynamic range in the lower ISO settings that will benefit my post editing. Interesting, eh? <music> a 
Another factor is that you are easier to create shallow depth of field with a larger sensor camera than a small sensor camera. Again, I'm not debating the fact. But remember, I'm only saying if a photographer chooses to use a lens with the same angle of view. For instance, 35mm full frame and a 17mm in micro four thirds, which covers roughly the same angle of view. But as a 17mm lens, the depth of field is not going to be as shallow as a 35mm lens. So, you will see the difference. So again, depends on use case, if you need or want really shallow depth of field aesthetic in your shots, you will have to use a large format camera, period. But let me show you some examples here. Right, let's look at my shots from my previous full frame cameras with shallow depth of field. Without a doubt that there is a certain look to these images, and depends on focal length, you can get some really crazy effects on it. But is it actually all that practical to use? In short, well, no, not in my field. In most cases, my clients pay me to remember where they are, so they want to see and recognize the location. And if I purposefully blur the background too much, and I will get a ton of complaints. Same can be said for documentary and environmental portraits. So even when I was using my full film cameras, I often stopped down my lens to 3.5 to 5.6, depending on focal length, so I can get the background more in focus while maintaining some sort of separations. Again, I don't need to stop down as much with my small Michael Forther system. But what this translates in the real world is that I have more scope to play with when the light does dim eventually. I can still achieve deeper depth of view to review the surrounding without the high ISO penalty. However, I may have emphasized my argument on micro four thirds or crop formats advantage. I would like to say that I can also create shallow depth of view shots with the right setup. It's all about playing with distances and focal length. It's not a light for light comparison that many continue to argue. So when you change formats, you adapt to that format to achieve the things that you really need. I did say that I can't defy physics. So yes, you can't shake off the noise from high ISO settings from my micro four thirds system. I may have the benefits that I mentioned earlier, but there will be times when I do need to push the system beyond its limit. This is the time when full time shines over my little cameras. Looking at some of these ultra high ISO shots for my second photographer again further confirms it. There are more details being retained in these settings. Yeah, there are noise of course, but they're not as mushy as the micro four thirds at the same settings, even with my latest OM1. But <laughs> yeah, there's always a but. There's a software solution to small sensors deficiency these days. And the last couple of years have been pretty crazy in the world of AI imaging software developments. Topaz, DxO, ON1, just to name a few. DxO in particular, which is what I use for my workflow, has been a godsend to combat mushy noises in my Kofortha system. There are two options in DxO at the time of making this video. Pure Raw is what I normally use for my workflow as I use it as a plugin to work in conjunction with my Adobe Lightroom Classic. And this combo works the wonder and make all my images free from noise at most ISO settings. The other and also newer option from DxO is their latest Photo Lab 6. Yeah, stay tuned for my review on that particular software. Both Pure Raw and Photo Lab 6 has their AI noise reduction module Deep Prime. <laughs> it has been the gold standard when it comes to raw noise reduction. And this works extremely well for these mushy high ISO raw files that I mentioned earlier. If you don't believe me, here's an example from an extreme high ISO photo of the bride who decided to throw her bouquet at the end of her big day in a very, very dim room. In order to freeze the action, I had to use my 17 Pro lens set to 1.2 aperture and ISO 12800 to maintain a usable shutter speed. The result is shocking to say the least, with the amount of details being retrieved from pure raw. Just as a reference though, I made a video a while back to compare various different noise reduction softwares, and you can check that out with the link up here. All in all, I will say that full frame definitely trumps over micro four thirds when it comes to high ISO settings performances. But as new AI software continues to improve, the gap is much narrower than many may have thought.
So, in reality, there is no better or worse system. I'm not saying that you should get a Michael Forther system today, or say that full frame is the best in the world. And all I'm saying is that you, as a photographer, know best on what you need for your job, for your creation. As most Michael Forther cameras tops out at 20 or so megapixels natively, you may need a system that will produce more resolution for specific projects. And likewise, despite what I said about latest software advancements, full frame may still be a route to take if you constantly need to shoot at high ISO environments. But for the type of work I do, Michael Forther makes sense, not just for imaging sense, but also financial, as more larger formats often cost more for equivalent pro-grade gear. Trust me, multiple times more. So, What's your thought on digital equipment? Have you encountered any scenarios that is similar to mine? And what do you think about software developments and Michael Four Thirds? And what kind of use case do you have for your system? Let's have a chat in the comment section below. Well, you know what to do now. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you do, give me a like and sub if you want to stay in touch with all things photography, filmmaking, and of course, Michael Four Thirds. Peace. I have a remote manual focusing wheel here. Well, it's the uh, follow focus modules by Small Rick. It's actually pretty cool then. I'm actually using the uh, uh, Viltrox Cine lens that is manual focus and I can just remotely doing all of these racking things. That is so cool, right? Anyway, that's a bit, yeah, I'm just having some fun here. Anyway, uh, thank you for watching. Let me just focus myself again. Yes, there we go. Uh, <laughs> Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. And uh, yeah, it's, it's a lot of reviews going on at the moment. And but I'm getting a little bit tired of doing reviews these days. And uh, although as much as I like to do them, and just like to take a little bit break there and just start talking a little bit about more photography and stuff that I actually do professionally. And uh, so in this case, I'm just giving a real world examples of um, you know really comparing full frame and also Michael Four Thirds. On the you know in the same environment in the same job so i can give you like both the goods and the bads on both systems um as you can see that you know for the type of work that i do i, I don't really see an advantage uh, for using full frame yes those extreme cases uh, uh you know uh, like the high ISO environments for instance the full frame does have this own advantage but if you look at the overall percentage of the shots that i do in lower light situations it's pretty slim and uh, like those really like the bouquet shot that I just showed you earlier, it is, you know, I'm talking about like 0.1% <laughs> of the entire day, you know, like, so for that, you know, I don't see the benefit of going full frame. Uh, if you constantly have to push high ISO settings for all kinds of shots, if you want deeper depth of field to cover group shots, for instance, having multiple people in focus. And uh, that's the scenario that when you think that, you know, having a micro forther is actually beneficial, then you know, being a, a disadvantage in the uh, in the photographic environment. So uh, I actually think that is is uh, uh, you know is is a good complement. You know, let's say that you can have both a system side by side if you really want to. So for high ISO stuff, you use the larger sensor format, and uh, for the rest, just micro four thirds. But it's really entirely up to you. But it's quite rare for a photographer to have two or even three systems on a day. Although I did that <laughs> many times before, uh, before I switched to Michael Four Thirds because I was kind of testing it out. So I did have Michael Four Thirds and Full Frame at the same time. But later on, I learned how to deal with it and adapt it to the uh, system and the Michael Four Thirds I mentioned earlier. So I, I'm totally comfortable with what I use on Michael Four Thirds. 1.2 lenses is a must if you're really shooting in low light situations, like I mentioned. Um, that's why they are pro lenses professional use uh, because you need to push those limits uh, but other than that you know it is totally fine you know like uh, uh, like I said many many things that Michael Forza is not good enough for many cases but I totally disagree really totally disagree with that uh, you do know what you need really at the end of the day if you really need high megapixels if you really need that 14 stop dynamic range which you really can't see on a, on a phone screen or even computer screens if you're not having the high uh, a very expensive reference monitor, you're not going to notice anything. You can pixel peep all you want, but ultimately, if you print your photos, if you're really just displaying on a smaller screen, 
you know, all those advantage is completely, completely gone. I use my micro forces to print albums. So, and uh, uh, they're 10 by 14, they're large size as well. I print A3 canvases. No, not a single client had ever complained about those stuff, you know. So in reality, in the real world, you know, this is what I get, you know. Like, so why would I need to invest in larger formats or pay more uh, uh, for my gear if I don't really need to, you know, and uh, that doesn't make business sense at all, right? My wallet would scream at me. But anyway, this is enough ranting and uh, not really ranting. It's more like educational stuff. I just really want to say what I want to say because people never really believe me when I sign the same, you know, despite I made multiple videos already, despite uh, I have said so many times, I know other photographers have done it and um, it's easier for like, let's say DP reviews to analyze it, to do test charts, to actually show you the pixel qualities and things like that. But it really does not matter in the real world. And uh, you know best, right? If you're using either system, if you use a multiple system that you can probably concur what I said, you know, there is, yeah, obviously technical advantages on larger system, but yeah, just look at the photos itself. You know, if to be frank, yeah, you have to be honest with me and uh, just look at those photos. You really can't much see much difference there in most most cases. That's it. Enough for me to say because I, I said it for quite long, but four minutes long. Anyway, I'll see you all next time. And uh, if you want to see more about these sort of contents, let me know in the comment section as well. So uh, I do read them all. And uh, don't worry, and I will read them all. I'm not necessarily I'll reply all. I just don't have the time really. And uh, but yeah. Anyway, if you want to say something, let me know. Bye for now.